Hi all, today I'm going to read a letter from Eunice to Alyssa. Uh, this letter is addressed from Miami, Florida to Flushing, New York, which is right outside New York City. It's in Queens, basically. Friday, August 18th, 1950. Dear Alyssa, thank you for your most welcome letter. I enjoyed immensely hearing about each member of the family and laughed as I read your descriptions of what each was doing. I am writing this letter out in the backyard as it's so terribly hot. Let me inform you that torrential rains is the only way it rains here. We also have thunder and lightning storms frequently. Some bursts of thunder are so explosive that it shakes the bed. Yesterday, we received alert warnings for a hurricane, which was headed this way, due here tomorrow. Fortunately, this morning, the radio announced that it was headed north, and we might only have a gust of wind. Woo! I certainly am relieved. Was not looking forward to a hurricane with 140 mile an hour winds. By the way, I'm anxious to hear how you made out at the dance at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Also, about Pratt. I have my fingers crossed and I said a prayer. I hope you will get good news. Bill's mother wrote that she spent a lovely day with you and thought the Frankfurters were delicious. I wish I could have been there myself. It sounded like you had so much fun. The day is a little long for me because Bill is on a split shift. That is, we arise at 5.30 a.m. He gets back at 10.15, leaves at 2 o'clock, and is home at 9.15. It is very undesirable, because we can't even go to a movie. But I think it will be only for a few more weeks. Joe flew here on Saturday and returned Wednesday. It sure was good to see him. And for a moment, it felt as though we were back in New York. I had my hair trimmed and it turned out to be an old fashioned bob. All I do is brush it in place. The people where we live have a dog and she reminds me a lot of Queenie, very friendly and affectionate. I always give her the bones and leftovers from our dinner. She follows me to the store and oftentimes sleeps in front of our door. I think you would appreciate the color of the sky and water here. I have never seen a prettier sky, so blue and white billowing clouds. And I thought you would like to have the enclosed wallet size wedding photo of yours truly. Well, Alyssa, that's all I can think of right now. I sure do miss you all, especially on Thursdays. Lots of love from us both. Eunice. P.S. Write again soon. I really like this letter. I think it, it it doesn't have a lot of information. Like I can tell they're not terribly close. Like, Or they're not in a place where they sort of speak their mind very, very honestly. Um, like I, I don't think, you know, it's it's polite to say, oh, I'm so lonely or, you know, stuff like that at this point in letter writing. So I think that you're still sort of formal uh, for the most part in, you know, letter writing and it's mostly descriptive. You're describing what's around you and stuff like that. I think the more confessional sort of type of writing becomes popular. Uh, shortly after this, like Sylvia Plath popularizes it and, um, you know, to be more sort of talking shit about people and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, the one thing that strikes me is the weather in Miami. So weather in Miami is big news. It still is big news. It's hurricane season when she's writing this letter. So I would imagine that it's, you know, the storms are very dramatic and, it's pretty much all anybody talks about, you know, during uh, hurricane season in Miami is the weather. You're constantly listening for 
you know, updates on hurricanes, where they're at, what they're doing. It's, it's kind of, you know, part of life there. So that's interesting. Also, the color of the sky and water in Miami is spectacular. It's like you're looking through a lens of, you know, something that's just unreal. It, it's so strange. Like even, you know, you can go up the coast just a little bit and you don't have that super dramatic, those blues, those really, really deep blues. And I don't know why. Um, it's like there's a blanket of silver over everything. So the sky and the water are just these really, really dramatic colors of blue, which is, you know, something that she mentions here, especially in the summer, not so much in the winter. The other thing that I really like in this letter is the mention of the dog. So, you know, it's very, it's something that I feel is connecting the two of them. And, and she, you know, she talks about the affection for this dog and it reminds her of this dog back home. I don't know who, you know, whose dog Queenie is, but it's obviously a dog they both know. And I think that's really sweet. Uh, the, the, the little part that, you know, she feeds the dog the bones and leftovers and the dog follows her to the store. And I definitely got like a very clear image of that in my mind. And then the dog like sleeping in front of their door. The other thing that I wanted to mention, because the hair trimmed is cute too, like she just, you know, suddenly talks about she herself getting her hair trimmed and how it's just wash and wear, you know, it's very, very sweet. She's probably 18 or 19 years old. I know that Alyssa, the recipient of this letter, is 18 years old, uh, just graduated high school and is applying for Pratt. So that's interesting because I know that because I bought um, a lot of stuff from Alyssa's estate and she did end up going to Pratt Institute and it, it's an art school in New York and ends up being a working artist for until she retired. So and the other thing that's mentioned is the U.S. Merchant Marines dance. So Alyssa ends up meeting a boy at that dance and they have a correspondence and here's their correspondence for the next six months. So that um, I think is kind of fun that, that, you know, that's in here. Unfortunately, the, the correspondence kind of turns out to be a dud, but I will read some letters from that correspondence at another time. Um, I really, really like this letter. I think that it's just a really, it's really nice sort of connecting sweet letter from uh, a young girl to another young girl. And also, I mean, there's it. I, I don't know if I'm projecting this, but I feel like there's some loneliness in there and a little bit of heartache like under the surface. Um, I may be projecting that because I know what it feels like to leave home, you know, when you're 18, 19 years old and what that feels like. You think you're supposed to be acting like an adult, but, you know, you're not really. I think it's interesting because even by the time I was 18, it was still kind of expected that you kind of either got married or you went to some sort of secretarial school. Let me know what you thought of this letter. What stuck out for you? What images might have stuck out for you? What feeling you got? Did you get the same feeling that I mentioned? Subscribe to this channel and until next time, go and write a letter to somebody. It's a really great way to connect and I highly, highly suggest you do it. I'll see you again. Everyone have a great day.